Hello, my name is Willie Williams, and several years ago, uh, I used to host the State of the Church Address. We used to go around to different cities and all over. Uh, we used to have discussions uh, about church and the status and things that are going on in the body of Christ. One of the things that I realized is that we don't talk enough. And we don't talk enough to each other uh, in the body of Christ. We preach at one another. Uh, we fuss at one another. Uh, some of us, we don't even talk. We'll go on social media and attack one another, never having a conversation uh, with one another. Several years ago, uh, we hosted the State of the Church Address uh, in Hernando, Mississippi, where Brother Terry Wallace and the West Oak Grove Church uh, actually hosted that conversation. Uh, we actually did it in multiple cities, but the video that you're about to see uh, is hosted uh, there in Hernando, Mississippi. I hope that you enjoyed the video. What you're about to see is a candid conversation amongst church leaders about the state of the church. In our brotherhood, this is a dialogue where we come to just talk about what's going on in the church of Christ. One of the problems that they see between couples who are on the verge of divorce, the first thing that they make them do is sit down and talk. And if we don't talk in the church of Christ, then the divide will become greater and greater. We feel something in the church, uh, but sometimes nobody talks about it. You hear about what's going on on the other side of the city, but there's no real venue for us to really come together and talk about our house issues. And so today, our plan and our prayer is that through this conversation, we'll be unified, and we'll come together, and we'll just talk about the things that are going on in the church. And preferably at the end, we'll all walk out with courage, uh, saying that, that maybe there's a hope, and I believe that there is a hope, for us to be strong and move toward the future with greater things for, for God. At this time, I'm going to ask our, all of our panelists to stand, please uh, come to the stage. Today is being who's the minister of the Northwest Church of Christ. We have Brother uh, Harvey Jackson. We have Brother James T. Uh, Thomas, who is at the Parkway Village Church of Christ. We have Brother Ken Jones, uh, who has retired after 29 years, amen, from the Goodman Oaks uh, Church of Christ uh, in South Haven, uh, and also uh, minister at White Haven. We have Brother <coughs> Terrence uh, Cannon uh, at the uh, South East Side Church of Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. We have Brother William Jones from the Boulevard Church of Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. And we have our host and our very own Brother Terry Wallace, uh, who is the minister here at the West Oak Grove Church of Christ in Hernando, Mississippi. Let, him, uh, let us give a moment. Discuss some important things about the church. This first started in September uh, of 2012, where we held this at the Seat of Crest Church of Christ in Dallas, Texas where we were able to bring the area-wide ministers together just to be able to sit down and have a conversation. That event went so well uh, that we had a second one this past year, February 16th, uh, where we gathered together uh, again with more leaders to be able to sit down and just have a dialogue. Then two weeks later, on March 2nd of this past year, uh, we also met in Houston, Texas, where we were able to gather the area-wide ministers there in Houston, Texas, to be able to have a dialogue and all of our conversations went well. So here we are in our third state of the church address this year uh, here in Fernando, Mississippi. What do you think is the number one reason that is hindering church growth in this local area? What do you believe is the number one reason that is hindering church growth in this local area. I would suggest and submit that the uh, number one reason for a lack of church growth is church health, because healthy things grow. And if we were more spiritually healthy as the people of God, then we would automatically experience growth. You don't make yourself grow spiritually any more than you make yourself grow physically. What you do is you do those things that make you healthy. Uh, and uh, a lack of commitment, a lack of consistent diet on God's word, all of that has uh, 
led us to a place where we're not nearly as healthy as perhaps we ought to be. And I would suggest that that, would, that is the reason we don't experience the growth that we should or could. Brother Jones is exactly on target there. Healthy churches result from healthy diet. In recent years, we have seen storm clouds gather across this land as it affects religion in general. And it threatens to take large numbers of people away from the Lord. And the devil is behind this. Satan is very evident in this. The result is that people have not been taught and have not studied the Word of God. Many people no longer believe that the Bible is the authoritative Word of God. And some of those people have lost their faith because their preachers have lost their faith. And they're not preaching the Word. And so large numbers of younger people are growing up who don't know the scriptures. And some of them who do know it have uh, a, de a despise for it. Uh, Satan is doing a number on this 21st century population in this country. And we are unhealthy because we are not being fed something that will grow us. Let me tell you, the thing that will grow the church is not another book on church growth. <laughs> Some other wrote who never grew a church. Mm -hmm. uh, the best book on church growth is the Word of God. Yes, Through his, uh, 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 through his word, to what is going on in 
history of those first principles, which kind of leads me to my second question. Uh, and I've heard uh, Satan, I heard the word distracted. Do you believe that the subject of praise, because there's a lot of preaching on it, there's a lot of uh, our lectureships, our, our gospel meetings sometimes has been consumed with that one subject. Do you believe that the subject of praise has actually distracted us from those things? You know, while maybe other churches are building hospitals, building schools, we come once again to talk about the same issue. Do you feel like praise has distracted us? It struck me, and I'll, I'll speak to, to, to your point about Die. The Bible says, Peter says, we have to desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby. Most of us grew up with old school parents. Anybody? <laughs> One of the things they used to tell us is you can't eat a bunch of junk because it will spoil your diet. I submit to you, uh, in many instances and in many places, people no longer, many people, Many people no longer hunger for the word because they're full of other stuff, substitutes. Uh, and, and, and sometimes even our worship assemblies are not word centered. To your point, often they are praise centered. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure why we're even arguing about praise. I don't even know what, what that's about. Uh, we, all of us, I believe everybody in here would, would agree that God is to be praised, Amen. that God is to be glorified. I don't, I don't know what that's about, except to say anything we do as the people of God that is man-centered is in worship. I don't care what it is. I, I, I don't care if it's two songs and a prayer or 15 songs. I don't care if it's 15 song leaders or no song leaders. Anything that has as its focus me in worship, mm -hmm. as opposed to God, mm -hmm. can't be worshiped, right. because worship is God's son. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think if we would just develop, quit eating substitutes, is what I'm trying to say, junk food, spiritually, mm -hmm. if we could, we would grow our hunger for the word, and we would be healthy. That, that's, that's what I suggest. Brother Jones, you are on target. When worship becomes me-centered instead of God-centered, then we're off track. Uh, we have all, this is the me generation. And people sometimes walk away from the church because they say, my needs are not being met. I'm not coming here on Sunday morning to meet my needs. I'm coming here to praise God in the songs and in the preaching and the prayer and whatever we do by His authority. That praise is God. And all this talk about more praise, more praise, more praise, I, I, I'm like you, Brother Jones. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Uh, because I thought we were praising God all the time. You know, I think, I think that it, it is a tactic of Satan uh, that has caused us to fight among ourselves and lost the praise. And, and not only is it a tactic of Satan, uh, I think a, a long ago, before I came on the scene, traditionally in the Church of Christ, uh, we were taught to keep our feet. You know, don't don't don't, don't pat it too loud, and don't don't do this. And, and we we spent a lot of time on that. And the younger generation that came along began to dissect the things. You get to find out that the patting of the foot had nothing to do, amen, with worship. But that's what we were taught. A lot of things our forefathers taught. I believe they taught them to the best of their knowledge. Uh, such as, uh, he that preaches the gospel should live with the gospel. For a long time, I thought that meant from what I was taught, that he meant he ought to live what he preached. Now, I believe he ought to live what he preached. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't what that text is teaching. That <laughs> means he ought to live by what? Hey, man, he ought to pay him. But as we learn. <laughs> You know, if, he, if, he's, if he's people doing the work of the ministry, pay the man. Don't mow him off and finish out the court. But when we learn better, those who had faith decided to do better. And as we decided to do better, Satan got involved and said to those, 
But this is the way our forefathers did. This is the way we are going to do it. And we come with tradition and not truth. And so Satan, I believe, who is very deceptive and cunning, has deceived us into believing that our argument is great. Our argument should be about grace. Uh, and anything that is not God's sake, God is not in it. And I really believe with all of our heart, we need to get back to what Jesus says. And that is saving souls. And preaching one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. And if you're preaching, that's going to be your you We know what we should be doing. We know what worship should be. But are we distracted? Are, are we caught up in, in other stuff when we get together? Yes, we are. And what we need to get is that healthy diet of leaders who will stay focused on what God requires and not what the people require. Now, we should always keep our minds open to the people of God. But we should never forsake the word of God for people. Now, Aaron, we, we, we listen to the people. No, you're supposed to listen to God. And that's what's hurt. Terry, do you know why we're not baptizing more people? Yes, sir. Because we're not teaching more people. Yes, Jesus said, teach them and baptize them. But we have quit teaching them. We have become distracted. And, and, and being distracted, it causes the church not to focus. If we say right now, we believe that the, the church of Christ is distracted, we're caught up in a lot of different areas, not even just praise, but maybe just in a lot of different areas. And my focus is on if your focus is off, you can't walk straight. Uh, as we, as you take an overview of the Church of Christ right now, what would you say is the spirit of, the, of our members? Some are angry. Maybe some are, are confused. Don't know who the leaders are. Don't know what direction the church is. You know, those are some comments, but as you, as you take an overview of the Church of Christ right now, what would you say, as far as our members is concerned, what is the spirit? Are we motivated? Are we all excited? Are we together? Or are we depressed for the peace? I'm saying among my contemporaries, as, as a gospel preacher, as a young preacher, I see the spirit of competition. Yeah, I see the spirit of competition. Uh, among us, every church oftentimes is trying to outdo another church. Uh, who has the biggest, biggest church? Who's doing this? Not recognizing, uh, as, as one preacher said, we like lighthouses. We don't compete. We just share light. Uh, and I think the spirit of competition in the body of Christ has killed us. It's distracted us from, from the cross. And when it distracts us from the cross, we can't save souls. We can't really realize because we took business trying to compete with one another. The master of deception. We can't, we can't lose focus. The pride, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, everything that will come under those three. Why, 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 are we a, why are we a focus on the lust of the flesh? It's killing us on the pride of life. You know, pride, pride, pride. You know, you know, you know, you know, pride was the was the play he played uh, uh, among the angels. You know, you know, in in heaven that got him kicked out. I mean, I mean, pride was what he pulled on Eve in, in the Garden of Eden when he made her believe that she was going to learn something or God was trying to keep something from her. Pride, pride is what's is, is, is what's killing us uh, in the in, among among the the uh, 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 church of Christ. And we don't always recognize it for what it is. You know, you know, you know, the first thing Jesus said, any man come up to me, let him do what? Deny himself. I mean, I mean, I mean, pride not going away. I mean, it it it, it, it raises it in all of us. And it's something we have to we have to we have to have to really really see it for for what it is. Whether it's a preacher or whether it's a, whether it's a church member, you know, to, to keep me from saying, uh, brother, forgive me, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, submission. I mean, all this stuff comes back to pride. You know, and, 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 and to me, this, this is what's so prevalent, uh, even among preachers or whatever. It's, it's, it's no longer, you know, you know, am I preaching to help the people, or am I preaching to for the people to say this was a good sermon, this was a great sermon. You know, I mean, I'm supposed to preach. I'm supposed to preach to 
to uh, feed the people, you know, you know to, rep to, to represent Christ. You know, not, not my accolades about how, how great a preacher I am, you know, or how, how well I can preach. You know, the focus is supposed to be on, 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 on teaching God's word in terms of, 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 the, of, the, of the people and, 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 and not, not my own self. The pride is what's feeding all of I wish I could go sign everything that he's, uh, Dr. Jefferson just said. Let me suggest something else to you and, uh, and uh, ask the audience to think, think about this. I, I would suggest that the, the members of the church lives are not any more distinguishable from their environment. Amen? amen. Yeah. Now, if you can't say amen, just say ouch. <laughs> Because that's true. We are as worldly in our thinking and behavior as people who claim no affinity to God. Uh, we drink as much high cause statistically. Uh, our marriages fail at, the, fail at the same rate. The State of the Church Address will be at the Refresh Summit. Register today, www.refreshsummitcoc.com. We want you to register with your teams. It's time for us to come together as a church and stop fussing at one another, stop going on social media against one another. It's time for us to come together and talk. Uh, there is a segment of the Refresh Summit where we'll have church leaders from all over and we'll sit down and we'll discuss and plan and talk about how we can do church more effectively. We look forward to seeing you at the Refresh Summit.